I could see Charlie and Sue, and they had Matt and Mikey with them, and and uh, Charlie had Matt, and he he said, "Take Matty, he's really hurt bad." There was five doctors that worked on Matt, and um, I knew by the time he ever got into the ambulance and left that he was already dead. I remember the rain, cold, cold rain just poured. Dark, it was so dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face, except for when the lightning would flash. And then you could look down and you could see every house was gone. That's all you could see as we walked down the street. Every house was gone, just flattened. The Barneville tornado was a quarter mile wide, its winds swirling at an estimated 250 miles per hour. Some died as their homes collapsed on them. Others, like two-year-old Matthew Ashelman, from flying debris. When a tornado this size hits a town, it becomes a churning mass of flying wreckage. This test footage shows just what debris can do. The wind by itself is enough to tear most ordinary houses apart. It can easily lift a weakly connected roof from the house. The walls then lose their support and the entire structure collapses. But a low-cost reinforcement of the roof-to-wall connection using a simple metal clip can make all the difference. It's commonly done in hurricane regions, but because of the tornado's erratic nature, rarely any place else, even Tornado Alley. To better understand how debris acts in tornadic winds, engineers at Texas Tech University have recreated the tornado's destructive power in the lab. With a unique kind of gun, they will fire this 2x4 at 115 miles per hour, the speed it might be hurled in the strongest tornado. Their target? Various kinds of walls. Is the chamber clear? Even sturdy Ready? brick ones. Three, two, one. They've learned that no economically built wall remains intact. Based on these tests, they designed an impact-resistant shelter that can be built into a closet. But the battle against the tornado involves not only protection. All right, Dale, that's a tornado drill. Open the door, please. Everybody stand up. Public education becomes increasingly important as scientists move toward a better understanding of tornadoes and more accurate predictions. Throughout Tornado Alley, students are taught to move downward, away from glass, and no matter what, to stay indoors. Go to a basement, a closet, even a bathroom where plumbing strengthens the wall. Hit the wall! The value of public awareness was made clear in April 1979, when a mile-wide tornado struck Wichita Falls, Texas. Some 6,000 homes and apartments were destroyed. Yet among the many thousands who found shelter in their homes, only five died. Tragically, 26 died in their cars, many of them fleeing the storm. The Barneville tornado struck in the middle of the night, too suddenly for anyone to prepare for it. But the very fact that people were in their homes may have prevented an even larger toll of death and injury. A year later, the town has been rebuilt but there remains a shattered sense of security. It's not one thing happened. <laughs> it's not like that. It's everything happened. You know, your business is gone, your town's gone, your school's gone. Just your house is gone, everything's gone. Part of your family's not here anymore. And there used to be so many kids out here. Now afterwards, there's no hardly any kids anymore like there used to be. <laughs> there used to be a slug of them. Because some moved out, some moved to other towns. and. It's just a total change, I guess. Before, we really never even had any alarm come into our lives at all when we heard of a tornado watch. But now, of course, when we hear the word tornado, it brings up a whole array of pictures in our minds. And my dreams in the first three months were never of tornadoes, but of utter confusion nothing ever came out right and i think that was what people had to live through they had nothing under control 
when it gets nasty, I get scared just like, you know, really bad when it's a lot of lightning and it's windy. And it's kind of like that night started out. And I get nervous watching, watch the clouds and, and the old heart's going nine miles an hour and I'm right at the top of the stairs wondering if I should go down and that's scary. I think that's the biggest thing that happened for this whole community. Their, their sense of well-being, of safety, was blown away, literally. Um, they're vulnerable. We found that the parents were really having as much trouble, if not more, than the kids were. Kids tend to express it. Parents tend to try to be strong. Parents would say, I want us all to feel fine again, so let's just not talk about it. And I know from a counseling standpoint that it's important to share and talk about it and to get it out. Across America's heartland, towns like Barneville live under the shadow of sudden and unexpected disaster. To make matters worse, tornado warnings are plagued with false alarms and chronic lateness. On local radar, the Barneville storm looked like any other. Only after the tornado was reported did the Weather Service issue a warning. And by then, rescue workers were already pulling people from their destroyed homes. If the public is to be warned of tornadoes reliably and further in advance, weather technologies will have to be updated. About the time of World War II, we learned that we could take a beam of radiation, send it out, bounce some of it off of raindrops, get it back at a receiver, and measure that power amplitude. And that's what we have with conventional radar. This system shows us how heavy the rain is, if we're gonna get one inch of rain or two inches of rain from a thunderstorm, but it's hard to use that information, and this is the way we've been since about the time of World War II, to say, where is a tornado going to occur? With a Doppler radar, we get the exciting new prospect of seeing the winds and maybe rotation up in the storm that might produce a tornado. This new radar is based on the Doppler effect. If the wind is moving away from or toward the radar, the signal will bounce back at a different frequency. The greater the difference, the greater the speed of the wind. When we look at the Doppler display, it becomes much easier to see areas of circulation. All of the red colors are flow away from the radar. The green colors are flow back toward the radar. And right at the center, there's a very dramatic color shift. We have a little red in the green and a little green in the red. Together, these colors show a signature for rotation. Right in this the tornado's signature on the Doppler screen was discovered as a result of Chaser's observations. In May 1981, this strong tornado was tracked on radar and followed by chase teams near Binger, Oklahoma. And on the Doppler radar analysis, there was a small anomaly. It was not known for sure that it represented a tornado, but by going back and getting the times of the chase team's observations and the places where the tornado was along its path, so what would look like a glitch in the data, turned out it correlated exactly with where the tornado was. So it was the signature of the tornado. She's bubbling. What do you have? Yes, it's firing along the edge. A year later, for the first time, the Weather Service in Oklahoma City began using Doppler radar from the Severe Storms Lab to issue warnings to the public. There is now a plan to install these advanced radars across the country. The system is called NEXRAD, Next Generation Weather Radar. It will cost about a billion dollars, but it could help reduce the huge costs exacted by severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. 500 lives and as much as a billion dollars in damage each year. Mike, Ed, I've got a warning for you. Dick, uh, you might try to get a hold Enid of Enid OHP, Stillwater PD, this is Oklahoma City weather. We're issuing a severe thunderstorm. Amateur radio, WR5, AWW, this is station. Persons in Covington, Enid, and Breckenridge are in the path of these storms and should be prepared for large hail and high winds. All right, we're putting it on the air now. 